Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Well, as I always say, projects breed projects. So, in order for me to be able to use this bigger uh, beaver tool holder in my mill, I'm going to have to do something about this slot and the spindle to hold the key in. Uh, obviously, over the years, this has been rigged. Uh, as they've cut this back, they've just elongated the slot back further and further in order to be able to tighten the holder up, which also means that they've cut the holder holes way out uh, in order for that to be able to work. And I'm not super keen on that. Don't really want to uh, take my nice holder and butcher it all up. Also, it means every time you put a different tool in here that's a factory, you have to butcher it to make it work too. So I'm gonna try to devise a draw key to go in here that'll be adjustable to where it can push this back and hold it in, in there and keep it nice and tight and rigid. Cause I already had, a pro I tried to bore with this like this just to do this job and uh, the bed started walking because of radial deflection, it just works itself loose. So I'm gonna have to hold it in in order for this to be a functioning deal. So uh, it's 5 8 radius, fits it good. So I'm gonna use this bolt to match that. And then I'll have to come up with something else for the rest of this. So let me go see what kind of materials I can hunt up and what I can think up and we'll see about getting this knocked out so that I can do the job that needs to be done. Let's go up to the other shop and see what we can do. First thing I wanna do is machine off this bolt head. Uh, give me something more to work with. So fire the lathe up and I'll turn that off and see what other parts I can find to build this out of.
I've got the matching tapers ground on them, I guess you could say it does, it is a nickel's worth of difference, because that's how, exactly how much it is. So, but when they're together, it should be parallel. So, they got a nice taper. Now it's high speed steel, so it should be good and hard and won't gall up. Make a nice surface. So, I get this attached to the pin and I'll be ready to uh, make something to put this in. Alright, now I'm grinding my, what will be my body parallel. This was a saw cut that I did in the horizontal bandsaw, so it's kind of crooked and get it to go just exactly straight. With about 30 thou out from end to end.
Okay, so I've got this thing to fit through here finally. So you can see it's got lots of clearance. And the way this thing works is I turn this screw in and that turns the wedge inside against the other wedge. It's parallel. And you see it's locked up now. So when this piece pushes against the, the bore of the spindle, it pulls this back in there tight and holds it where it can't come out. This is versus the standard deal for these is a tapered wedge you drive in. Uh, they're not as convenient as this. You gotta beat them in, beat them out. They get banged up, the spindle gets banged up and there's not really any adjustment to it for variance in the slots. It's gotta be exact. So you pretty much have to have a wedge for every single one. This here gives me a variance. I might have to still have some spacers here, which I know I'll have to have because of my spindle being cut out from where it's been uh, repaired and reamed over the years. So I'm going to get this out and just go to the other side and knock the wedge back. And out it comes. So, closer up look of the action maybe. It's, it's down there and as I turn this screw in you should see the gap getting bigger. Underneath there. And that's it. So I've got 50 thousandths of adjustment that I can take up with this. That's all my wedges are allowed. It actually takes a fairly steep wedge to get much travel over much distance. But at the same time, this has got a lot of clamp pressure. So I didn't want to get real steep on the wedge to get a lot of travel and not have a real good tight clamp. Because the tighter it's clamps, the more rigid it is in the spindle. The more rigid it is, the better it cuts. So I'm willing to give up some adjustment and have to shim it to make it work, then uh, give up my clamping force. Back together it goes. So now you'll see where I got a rig up on the mill to make the rest of this work. So go do some engineering and figure out what I want to do here. I'll get that done, I'll bring you back. Well, there's the wedge in my spindle. You can see down the bottom, the piece comes out and pushes against the Morse taper inside and draws it in and locks it. And cut these blocks and ground them to fit side to side and then ground a radius on the end here just to match this half butchered hole from where the spindle's been cut back to take up that gap. But uh, the wedge is in there and it's good and tight. It's holding good. I'm not getting any chatter out of it. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. Well, I hope you enjoyed getting to see me make this uh, wedge locking key for this Morse taper. To hold it in so it can't come out. I'll probably have to make one of these for the Carlton sometime too. Uh, it would be ideal for it if ever do any kind of boring stuff. For drills it doesn't matter because they hold themselves in but if you start using these boring heads or milling cutters they can want to walk and uh, pull themselves out and that's always a bad deal if they get loose while you're running on something. So this here will be it. sure to keep them nice and tight and I got that tapered wedge in there both sides to make the top push out evenly and hold that in there so it doesn't distort the spindle. And you don't want it 
one of the prizes of those wedges is that it can actually cock the spindle because it's putting the force on one side. If you really drive them in tight, you can tip it. So that can be a good thing or a bad thing, but it's easiest just to have them set up like this where it pulls straight in the center and you don't have to worry about it uh, distorting the spindle when you tighten it up. It looks like it's running pretty true, so I'm satisfied with this job so far. Well, now I can get back on to the jobs that need to be done. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll catch y'all later. Got some good stuff coming up. Stay tuned.